Hi, what we're going to do here is show you how to make a line graph in Excel using some sample data from a pretend experiment. And what we did in this pretend experiment was that we were trying to figure out how exposure to UV radiation affects the number of mutant cells that appeared in three different species of bacterial populations. So what this data is telling us is that when the bacteria were exposed to no UV radiation, zero minutes of UV radiation, then that produced three mutant E. coli cells two mutant S. aurea cells and four mutant C. sporogeny cells. If these bacteria were exposed to UV for one minute, then 50 mutant E. coli cells are produced, 25 S. aureus mutant cells are produced, and 10 C. sporogeny cells are produced. And so that's kind of how then you read the rest of these numbers in the sample data set. So if you want to make a graph of this data, then the first thing to do is to figure out which variables you'd like to be plotted along the x-axis or the horizontal axis. And so you might remember that conventionally it is the independent variable that is plotted along that x-axis. And so once you figured out which of your variables would be considered the independent variable, then you would type those values into the left-hand column like I did here. The next is to figure out which values you'd like to be plotted along your y-axis or your vertical axis. And conventionally it is the dependent variables that are plotted along that axis. So once you've figured out which of your values are going to be your dependent variable, you type those numbers in to the right adjacent to where you typed in your independent variable values. And so if you're in a situation like uh, we are here where you'd like to compare three different conditions to one another, then you would type in those y variable values right next to each other like you saw here. And so by three different conditions, what I'm meaning is, uh, so as an example, here we are comparing how exposure to UV affects the number of mutants that appear for three different species of bacteria. So if you'd like all three of those data sets to, to appear on the same graph, so that makes it easier to compare those effects directly to one another easier, then again you just type in the corresponding dependent variable or y-axis values right next to one another like I did here. Alright, so after you have all of your values typed in for both your independent variable and then for your dependent variables, in order to make a graph out of it, you highlight all of the numbers you just put in. Make sure to also highlight the labels for each one of those values. So in this case the labels would be time exposed to UV and then the name of, the, of each one of those bacterial species. So make sure to highlight all of that. Then you go up to insert and then pick the kind of graph or pick the kind of chart that you would like uh, Excel to make from, that, from those data. And what I'd recommend at least for our class is that you choose this one for scatter and then select the one where the points are connected by a smooth line. So that one's called scatter with smooth, smooth line and markers. So select that and when you do so it'll show you what your graph will look like. Now there's a chance that the graphs will look unexpected, like not anything like you're expecting it to look based on what you see here. So if that's the case then there's a simple fix. Just click on the graph that Excel just produced, go to chart design, and then click on switch row column. So if it's clicked a certain way, then the graph that Excel ends up making won't look uh, anything like you were expecting. So in this case, this is kind of weird. This is not what I would expect my graphs to look like based on the numbers that I see. So if when you first make your chart, you see something weird that looks like this, then again, just click on switch row column and that should fix it right up. The next thing to do is to add a title and labels to your graph. To do that, let me just make this a little bit bigger to make it easier to type things in. Make sure you are clicked on the graph. Make sure you're, you are in the chart design tab. Then go over to quick layout. And I suggest using quick layout number one here. And the reason why I like quick layout number one is because it gives you placeholders where you can type in the graph's title and then the labels for the X and the Y axes relatively easily. So go ahead and uh, select layout number one and then when you do that you can easily again type in the chart title and if you're in my class make sure to remember the the rules for what makes a good chart title. Go ahead and type in the label for your x-axis and when you do that always remember to include the the units. So in this case in this case the units are minutes right so these numbers on the x-axis represent minutes and then type in your label for the y-axis or the vertical axis. And after you do that, one thing I often do to make the graph easier to read is that I include these labels directly on the graph itself. So instead of having this as a legend kind of off to the side, oftentimes I do this. I go insert, text, and then text box. And then I make a text box right at the end of each one of these lines just as to show directly on the graph what each one of those lines represents. So blue line represents E. coli. So I'll type that in here. Orange line represents S. aureus, so I'll type that in here. And then gray line represents C. sporogenes. So once you have those typed uh, directly onto the graph, then you can delete this legend by just clicking on it and hitting delete. Afterwards, you might have to reposition these text boxes so that they 
are in a place that makes sense. So again, oftentimes I prefer doing that because it makes it kind of easier to read what, he, what each one of these lines represents and it frees up some of the space on your chart. A couple of other things that you probably will want to do is to make your graph bigger so that it takes up the entire screen or the entire page if you print it out. The way you do that is by right clicking on your chart somewhere down close to the x-axis label, I'd say. Then click on move chart to a new sheet. And I'd suggest just naming it whatever the title is that you chose for the graph. And when you do that, now you have your chart taking up the entire screen or the entire page, again, if you print it out. And one last thing I wanted to show you is how to do linear regression lines. So there is going to be some instances where it'll be appropriate to include a linear regression on your graph. And so the way to do that, if you want to include a, a linear regression or a best fit straight line that'll go through a set of data points, is that you right click on any of the dots that make up that data set. So if I want a linear regression to go through this blue set of data, I just pick any one of those data points and right click on it, then go to add trend line, make sure that linear is selected. And then I like to go towards the bottom and tell Excel to explain the or to display the equation of that linear regression on the chart. That way you'll get to see the slope of the linear regression line, which uh, could come in handy. And so you can do that for all of the data sets that appear on your graph. Just right click one of the points and go add trend line. Make sure it's linear and then tell Excel to display the equation of that trend line on the chart. So after doing all of that, you should, know how, you should now have a graph that uh, will make it easier for anyone reading it to make conclusions about your data.